welcome to Youth City Council, a program of Oklahoma City for the youth of our community to um, uh, learn leadership and learn more about our city. We will be doing our ward reports and our committee reports, and today we are going to start with um, Ward 8. My name is Megan Neves. I'm a student at Deer Creek High School and a representative from Ward 8. This month's commission report focuses on the Oklahoma City Water Trust. After meeting with Chris Browning, the director of the Oklahoma City Water Trust, my partner and I were informed of the progress taking place. They are enhancing their customer experience by adding a new mobile device-centric portal, call escalation program, and field operation customer service quality program. With an asset management program, they are continually keeping pipes and plants maintained, repairing devices as needed, and replacing specific assets when they have surpassed their remaining useful life, which they determine during their constant condition assessment process. By keeping up with this cycle, they are impacting their customers less and spending around 35% less. They are also updating the giant storage tanks at the Draper water plant. They are replacing parts of the ozone system at Hefner to enhance taste and smell of the water and putting out a contract to add lime to coagulate solids. Also, they are doing a video inspection of the sewer mains throughout the city. This will take about seven and a half years. Finally, there are four pieces left of the pipeline project mentioned in last month's report. In two years, the whole pipeline will be done and both Hefner and Draper plants will be connected. This concludes my commission's report. My name is Gladys Green and I'm a senior at Edmond North High School. I'm extremely excited to highlight some of the things going on in Warren 8. There's been significant job growth because of companies like Amazon, Heartland, and Costco. And the phase four of sidewalks is near completion. Um, the Oklahoma Judiciary, Judiciary Committee is focusing on a new jail diversion program dealing with the homeless court system that was adopted in San Diego that they are thinking about in implementing into our system. And then there will also be a penalty reduction program that runs through March of 2020. This concludes my word report. Thank you. Ward 7 reports. Good morning, OKC. My name is Teresa Sorrells. I attend Mount St. Mary High School, and I'm the Ward 7 representative. There are some thrilling events happening in Bricktown this October. The street, East California Avenue, was changed to Kings of Leon Lane. They changed the name of this street because to honor the band because three of four of the members grew up in OKC and they just had a free concert Friday, September 27th. Next up, Singo Wednesdays. It's like bingo, but they use songs instead of numbers. That's happening on both October 16th and 23rd from 6 to 10 p.m. The sixth annual Brick or Treat is also happening this month. It's free to attend. Parents, you can bring your 14-year-old children or younger in costume. There will be candy, pumpkin painting, photo booths, spooky tunes, and great costumes. That is happening on October 28th from 4 to 7 p.m. The fifth annual Paint the Town Pink Gala, which is presented by local companies, it celebrates breast cancer survivors. The tickets for this event are $150 each. This includes food, drinks, casino games, raffle prizes, and disco music by Super Freak. The proceeds of this event go to Project 31, which is a local breast cancer nonprofit. It's happening in the Bricktown Events Center on Friday, October 18th from 7 to 11 p.m. If you'd like more information about these events, go to welcometobricktown.com and look at the calendar. and You can get the details. This concludes my award report. Hi, my name is Fiza Sheikh. I'm a senior for Edmund, from Edmund Santa Fe High School. Um, and good morning, Oklahoma City. Happy October. From October 1st to, si to the 6th, the Oklahoma City Zoo's annual pumpkin drive is back. Bring a pumpkin larger than your head and receive free same-day admission. The limit is one free admission per person. And the Halloween Warehouse Oklahoma City is hosting a pumpkin patch right outside of the zoo for easy pumpkin picking. Donated pumpkins will be used to, de to decorate haunt the zoo. Um, you won't need a Mr. Meeseeks to make the perfect date night a reality. 
After a successful introduction in June, the Oklahoma City Zoo is pleased to announce the return of date night on Monday, October 14th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. The zoo will be open exclusively for adults 21 and older to explore. Um, enjoying the beautiful Oklahoma fall with a multitude of activity options, including a special appearance by the Rickmobile, making its only Oklahoma City stop on the nationwide Don't Even Trip road trip. The Rickmobile is like Oscar Mayer, the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile, but instead of a hot dog, the vehicle is shaped like Rick and Morty's mad scientist, Dr. Rick Sanchez. It opens to reveal a mo mobile merchandise shop with t-shirts, figurines, toys, and more from Rick and Morty and other classic adult swim series. Buy your tickets at oklahomacityzoo.org slash date nights. Single tickets are $25 each. Soak this up. You can make a difference with a simple sip of a beery good beer. Join the Oklahoma City chapter of the American Association of Zookeepers at Oklahoma City's Anthem Brewing Company, LLC. On Saturday, October 19th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. for great brews um, benefiting wildlife conservation. Attendees will enjoy rattle prizes and silent auction, plus 20% of all beer sales will benefit bear conservation efforts. Um, guests are storming the Haunt the Zoo, all grown-ups Area 51 VIP lounge, and it's, it's sure to be lit. But don't worry, we still have space for guests at Oklahoma City's biggest and best 21 and up Halloween event happening on October 25th from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. This out-of-the-world genera general admission ticket um, discounts ends today. Tickets will then increase to $30 for general admission. Um, thank you for running for uh, the Monarchs so that they can fly and thrive. At the third annual Monarch Madness 5K Fun Run that happened last month, um, they, it was presented by um, a, a local company and the zoo transformed into a kaleidoscope full of color and cheer. Um, this is the end of my Ward 7 Commission Report. Thank you. Hello, KC. My name is Jesus Berrigan and I attend Southeast High School. And I'm your core representative for Ward 6. This morning, I'll be presenting a commission report over the Downtown Design Review Committee and the Plaza District. First off, the most exciting news we have for the Downtown Review Committee this month is that they probably won't be having a meeting on October 17th because there were no applications submitted before the deadline. The Downtown Review Committee is one of the busiest review committees, so it's unusual to cancel a meeting. The deadline to submit your application is on October 15th, just in case anything comes up. And for the Plaza District, there's going to be an art show hosted at the Plaza District on October 10th from 12.30 to 6 p.m. This art show will be featuring art from Sam Smith, Sarah Elizabeth, Ophelia Ochoa, and Peg Busick. Be sure to stop by and check out their amazing art. Thank you, and this concludes my half of the report. Good morning, OKC. My name is Fidel Fryer. I attend class in SAS, and I will be conducting your Ward 6 report. International Observe the Moon Night is being hosted by the Oklahoma City Astronomy Club and Wheeler Ferris Wheel. Uh, this event will be taking place on October 5th, uh, which is this Saturday, from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. It is located on 1701 Southwestern Avenue. It is free and open to the public. This annual worldwide public event encourages observation, appreciation, and understanding of our moon and its connections to NASA, planetary science, and exploration. Pumpkin Bill presented by OG&E is uh, uh, October 11th through October 27th on the Myriad Botanical Gardens. The popular children's garden will be transformed into a fall festival uh, featuring thousands of pumpkins, hundreds of gourds, and tons of fun activities, such as the Spooky Pooch uh, Parade, where you can bring your dog dress up with him, and maybe even win the best costume. And the pumpkin bill party, where you can bring your own self costume, enjoy drinks, food, and maybe a little bit of dancing. This will be located on 301 West Reno Avenue. Last but not least, we have the Midtown Walkabout, hosted by the Downtown in Partnership and Midtown OKC. It is free and open to the public on October 19th. E events such as face painting, live art, kids' crafts, a photo booth, and more will be uh, present at this Midtown Walkabout. Attendees can pick up uh, an event map with locations of the programming on that day. This, conducts, um, this concludes my Ward 6 report. Thank you. Ward 5s, 
uh, Ward and Commission Report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Brinkley Abbott. I attend South Mar High School, and I am your co-representative for Ward 5. Today we'll be reviewing important actions that have taken place within the Golf Commission, specifically regarding our local early wine golf course. The Oklahoma City Public Pop Property Authority recently approved the reservation of $255,000 from the Unallocated Golf System Equipment Replacement Fund. That was a mouthful. This fund balance will reserve $64,000 for each of the four main Oklahoma City golf courses, including our local early wine golf course. This money will be used for equipment purchases or debt services. The Oklahoma City Golf Commission also approved for $64,000 to be reserved for unforeseen expenditures at any course. At the Oklahoma City Golf Commission meeting, Mr. Mosher from the Parks and Recreation Department later said concerning this equipment fund resolution that upon approval by the trust, he will be dispersing those funds equally and they should be available to the golf courses this October. Concerning Early Wine's new clubhouse, the building committee met this September with Michael Hinchy from the GSB architecture firm. Mr. Hinchy displayed a PowerPoint design of the Early Wine Golf Course Clubhouse and the motion was made and seconded to adopt the proposed concepts for potential future fine tuning. Um, finally, the marketing committee recommended a marketing campaign and approval for a budget not to exceed $50,000 from now until June 30th of 2020. This campaign would start with the nine hole green fee, then winter promotion of tour of the city and frequent player coupons in time for the holidays. And in the spring, there will be aggressive radio and TV campaigns. Thank you and this concludes my Golf Commission report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Julieta Ibarra. I'm a senior at Santa Fe South High School and I'm a representative for Ward 5. Today I will be giving you some exciting news going on within the, the Ward 5. Um, the Woodson Senior Center is having a local art studio tour where you could see work and new creations come to life of a couple of artists in OKC. That will be on October 10th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The cost will be $10 and is only available to ages 55 and up. Also, if you are eligible to vote, OCCC will have a voter registration to help people register and will provide forms and we'll mail them in for them. That will be October 4 and 9 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They will also be hosting a fall carnival at the beginning of fall with free food and games open to the public. That will be October 10 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They will also be hosting a job fair that will include numerous employers with booths and will be held in the general dining area on the main campus. That will be October 16 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also, the Pioneer Library will have preschool story time. It will be story time full of books, movements, rhymes, and music. Parent participation is required. This is for ages 3 to 6, and it will be on October 4 in room A and B on South OKC. There will also be yoga for beginners. It's, beginners, it's a beginner's class for people with no experience needed. Registration is not required, but it is encouraged, and participants must sign a waiver. This will be, take place on October 7th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in rooms A and B on South OKC. They will also host a Touch, Learn, and Create. It will have sensory stations for children where they can spend as much time as they want on each one. And the adults are encouraged to walk through stations to encourage children. This will take place on October 16th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And it is for ages 2 to 6. This concludes my ward report. Thank you. Continuing on with Ward 4, Board and Commission Reports. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Mackenzie Reeves from Moore High School, and I am your co-representative from Ward 4. Today, I will be bringing you the Planning Commission Report. The final plat of Northwest Expressway and Mustang Commercial Center was approved at the September 12th Planning Commission meeting. Also approved on the 12th of September was the final plat of Chisholm Creek Village, Phase 2, north of West Hefner Road and west of Northwestern Avenue. The final plat of Casey's Canterbury Plaza was also approved at the Planning Commission meeting on September 12th. It is located north of Southwest 44th and east of South Mustang Road. 
The Planning Commission recommended for approval at the September 12th meeting an application by Stephen K. Kegel, MD, for a special permit to operate an outdoor gun range in the AA Agricultural District located at 12301 North Indian Meridian Avenue. The Planning Commission recommended for approval at the September 12th meeting an application by Cinemark USA Incorporated for a special permit to operate a movie theater serving mixed beverages in the PUD 598 Planned Unit Development District and the Northeast Gateway Urban Conservation District located at 6001 North Martin Luther King Avenue. If you have any questions, you can visit OKC.gov for more information. This concludes my Planning Commission report. Good morning. My name is Lane Youngblood, and I go to Carl Albert High School, and I am a Youth Council co-representative for Ward 4, and this is your Ward 4 report. On Saturday, October 5th, Capitol Hill will be hosting the 14th annual Fiesta de la Americanos from 12 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. There will be a parade with many decorated floats to start the day off. After the parade ends, there will be live entertainment, food, electric vendors, Latino art, and many fun activities planned throughout the day. It should be a really fun experience and hopefully a lot of people come out and support. Also on October 5th, there will be a fun run hosted by Wiley Post Park to help support and raise awareness for Rett Syndrome. 100% of the registration fees will be donated to the Rett Syndrome Foundation. It is always a good thing to see people come out and help support a great cause. So if you want to get in shape or help this foundation out, this is a great place to be. There is also a fishing tournament hosted by Lake Stanley Draper that was scheduled to be on September 15th, but was moved to September 22nd and was a big success. Sadly, I had plans was not able to attend. I know I would have had lots of fun participating in that. This will conclude my Ward 4 report. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear Ward 3. Hello, my name is Jorge Pena. I am a senior at Western Heights High School, and today I will be presenting the tra transit system report. Last Friday was the grand opening of the Scissor Tail Park, with, three, with events running three days. Embark was involved in a number of ways. First, they operate Union Station, which is the headquarter for the park. Second, Embark Streetcar is at the heart of the event, with many route and schedule alterations to assist. The bus routes were also significantly altered to accommodate the park opening. The three days were filled with fun activities for Oklahomans to enjoy, and Embark was there to assist every step of the way. In addition, Embark started operating 365 days a year, which of course includes all holidays. This is a benefit for customers. For example, if you're riding the bus on Christmas, that means you really have to ride the bus that day. Now, Embark will be able to connect more Oklahomans during the holidays. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Desiree Rickett. I am a senior at Mustang High School, and today I will be representing Councilman Larry McAtee for my Ward 3 report. So I'd like to start off my report with events at the Woodson Senior Center. If you are the required age of 55 plus, this part is for you. There's casual painting, wood carving, workshops, and sewing classes, a little bit of everything for our good old senior citizens. You can learn more at okc.gov. Go under recreation and see our fabulous senior programs. I'd also like to con congratulate Weston at its auction at Castle Falls. They had a great turnout and it was really good. In case you didn't know, Weston is a nonprofit started in 2001 in to improve all aspects of life from Northwest 10th Street to I from I-44 to Lake Overholster. Awesome. So speaking of improvements to our aspects of life, maps for special. MAPS for special election is December 10th. Citizens of Ward 3 can expect a new park to be built in our ward, location still undecided, and refurbishing of existing parks such as our very own South Lakes Park, Tulsa Park, Harlow Park, and many more. Um, let's all remember that Amazon's first fulfillment center in Oklahoma launched on the 25th of August. It's known as Amazon OKC One Fulfillment Center Day by our Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt and 1,500 full-time jobs are going into our city from that. So I'd say Ward 3 is off to a great start for fall. Remember to keep an eye out for our city's great trick-or-treating events for the family, kids, or just yourself. To 
enjoy some sugary goodness as we get closer to Halloween. Have a great month, Oklahoma City, and this concludes my report. Thank you, Ward 3. Ward 2, Commission and Board Reports. Good morning, Oklahoma City. I'm Maya Chadid, and I attend Class and School of Advanced Studies. Today, I'm going to be filling you in on all the incredible things happening in Ward 2 this month. First off, Feast in the Pesedo is October 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. It is a unique funding concept that started in Santa Fe and then moved to Oklahoma City. It's basically where five hopeful artists are picked from a board to gain financial support from the community to fund their very own project. Every attendee that purchases a ticket gets free dinner and a ballot to cast their votes for their favorite artists at the end of the night. But there can only be one lucky winner. At the dinner, each artist will pitch their idea and hopefully win. Come on down to help fund these artists' dreams. Tickets can be purchased at www.thepaseo.com org slash feast. Next up, Magic Lantern, something that I really wish I knew about when I was a kid. It is October 27th from 3 to 6.30 p.m. Magic Lantern is a night of light instead of fright. Magic Lantern is a place for children to experience a positive art-focused event the weekend before Halloween. It includes a labyrinth, costumes, works of art, choreography, and is free and fun for all. The cold months are approaching, and if your need for creativity isn't filled, maybe some poetry from Poetic City will. On October 8th from 7 to 9 p.m., experience OKC's mind-blowing spoken word session performer in person. Spooky season is upon us. Until next time, Oklahoma City, I hope it's a month of treats and not tricks. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Francisco Hernandez, and I am a student from Putnam City High School. Today, I will be giving the the commission report. There is an individual consideration to demolish a garage on Norwest 23rd Street, which has been approved by staff with the specific finding that the process, process of work will be an advice effect on the historic character of the district or property, but complies with all the relevant standards and guidelines and section, sections of the municipal code. There's another individual consideration. It's to install new windows on Norway's 26th Street. The rule has been up allowed, but they have denied to install new windows because it will affect the historic character and the property's view. On Saturday, October the 12th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., on the Paseo Farms Market, it's offering locally grown product focused on farmers markets centrally located in the Oklahoma City in the Paseo Art District. The tickets can be purchased online on www.thepaseo.org. This is, uh, there's so much going on in Oklahoma City and this winter months coming up. So I hope to see all of y'all at the, of one of my favorite coffee shops in the Paseo Arts District, and this concludes my commission report. Thank you. Let's hear from Ward 1. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Samuel Messiani. I attend Putnam City High School, and today I'll be giving the commission report over the Convention and Visitors Bureau. If you like country music, be sure to check out Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow, along with the Brothers Osborne and Kendall Marvel. It will be at the Chesapeake Energy Arena, on October 4th, this Friday. Uh, if you'd like to know more about uh, last minute ticket prices, uh, go to ticketmaster.com. Uh, if you're not that interested in country music, but love jazz, Duke Ellington's Sacred Concert will be performed at the Civic Center Music Hall on October 13th, 2019. Canterbury and the wonderful Oklahoma City Jazz Band will take on Duke Ellington's series of musics that he declared that the most important, his most important work. Uh, this is a blend of uh, rhythms and styles familiar with uh, jazz, jazz lovers by my, like myself and with choral sounds from early churchgoers. Um, if you'd like to know more about tickets, go to okcciviccenter.evenue.net. Along with spooky season upon us this October, uh, this upcoming thunder season is upon us. Uh, this team went through major changes this summer, so it's going to be fun to check out um, a new and fresh look to the 
Thunder team. Uh, speaking of that, the first preseason game at uh, Chesapeake Energy Arena will be on October 10th. Game starts at 7 p.m., but doors open 90 minutes prior to tip-off. This will be against uh, our visitors from New Zealand, the Sky Sports New Zealand Breakers. Uh, tickets start as low as $15, so uh, be sure to check it out. It's at a good price. Uh, this is one of four preseason games before the season kicks off on the 23rd. Uh, also, on October 17th, there's a, supposed to be a scheduled meeting of the Oklahoma City Convention and Visitors Commission at 10 a.m. at the State Fair Park. Thank you, and this, com this concludes my board commission report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Cameron Pennington, and I am a senior at Putnam City West High School, uh, and I'm the co-representative for Ward 1. I'd like to begin my report by congratulating Councilman James Greiner. Uh, he was appointed as the vice mayor for the next six months, and I want to wish him the best in that new position. Um, for Ward 1, there are some uh, more improvements coming to Route 66 Park, which is one of my personal favorite parks in our ward. Um, an additional $14,000 uh, was uh, granted to that park th this month uh, for its improvements. Um, being that this is October, I would like to uh, mention an event coming out in Ward 1 at the Oklahoma Department of Human Services building uh, near 10th and Council. On October 26th, they'll be hosting uh, the 10th Street Trunk or Treat event from 2.30 to 5. This is an event where you can bring your kids and have a safe environment uh, with uh, volunteers from the Department of Human Services and um, they wanted to give this event for people that might not um, have the opportunity to trick or treat in their neighborhood. And with that, I will conclude my Ward 1 report. Thank you. And finally, our Greater Oklahoma City at Large represent representatives. Hi, my name is Nick Sayeg, and I'm a senior at Western Heights High School, and I'm your co representative for Oklahoma City at Large. Today, I will be reporting for the Economic Development Trust of Oklahoma City. Sadly, the Economic Development Trust did not meet for the month of September. However, I do have some exciting updates regarding the development of Oklahoma City. First, I want to talk about the new Monarch building opening in Midtown sometime this month. The building will host two companies that will host their headquarters out of the building. The company's intent was to have their employees in the creative, lively district that is Midtown, and who can blame them? This building will start development in the area as well as improve, bring some infrastructure improvements to accommodate for the building. Second, I want to talk about the development near our new Scissor Tail Park. Around the park, we have seen an increase of businesses wishing to move and take advantage of the high population which will be generated because of the park. This includes restaurants and bars and local residential areas. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Katherine Hill, and I attend Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. I am your co-at-large representative, and today I'll be presenting the city report. This past weekend, Scissortail Park had its successful grand opening. The park was created from a penny sales tax generated from MAPS 3. It is funded by the Scissortail Park Foundation under a lease and management agreement with the Oklahoma City Economic Development Trust. The Kings of Leon performed Friday night after a mic drop moment by Mayor David Holt for over 28,000 people, making it the largest outdoor concert in Oklahoma City history. 30 of its 76 acres are now open to the public, including gardens, woodlands, a lake, a children's playground with water fountains, and a performance stage. On October 5th, the park will hold a leash cutting ceremony to open its new dog park. The park features sections for both small and large dogs and water fountains for you and your furry friends. Every, every Saturday morning in October, the fall market will be offered by the park's horticulture team, hosting local vendors. The other 46 acres making up the lower park are set to open in 2021. Please visit scissortailpark.org for more details on the weekly happenings at the park. Thank you, and this concludes my at-large city report. Thank you. This concludes our Youth City Council Commission and Board reports for the month of October. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. 
The Youth Council is a partnership between the city and Leadership Oklahoma City. The 18 Youth Council members learn about the challenges of local government firsthand, and the program provides them with an effective, meaningful channel to influence decisions affecting their homes, schools, friends, and community. While serving, the members learn about local government, its components, processes, goals, and successes.